Government challenges Cameroonians to make a gainful use of social media platforms rather than consider them as weapons of mass destruction, disinformation and deep fake news propagation. A fresh crop of lawyers integrates the Cameroon bar with challenge to live up to the canons of their trade and deserving of the members of a club of core generally branded as the noble profession. And the city mayor of Boya, David Mafani Namange, stages a strong affront against Operation Ghost Town, sealing business promises that respected the call while encouraging the city dwellers to have faith in government's security measures. Those are our lead stories. Hello and thanks for joining us on the 7.30 News. I am Ben Meno Pufong. Stay tuned. Each of us must comply with the measures that have been taken. Welcome once again. The U.S. Ambassador to Cameroon, Peter Ballerin, is leaving Cameroon after three active years at the helm of the U.S. diplomatic mission in Yaoundé. The diplomat was at the Unity Palace today for a farewell audience with President Paul Beer. During their exchange, President Beer and the departing U.S. diplomat took stock of gains in U.S. Cameroon relations during Mr. Balloran's tenure before exploring areas of consolidating bilateral ties between Yaoundé and Washington, D.C. Chief Unity Palace correspondent Ashu Nyente will be joining us later on in this newscast with details of that Unity Palace audience. Time for us to talk about other developments in the news now. The financial performance of the Central African States Development Bank for the 2019 financial year stands at plus 15 billion CFA francs, representing a 32% rise. These figures were made public at the General Assembly of the bank that held recently with its chairperson, Henri Marie Dondra presiding the video conference deliberations. The General Assembly was attended by finance ministers of the sub region as, uh, and was crowned by a number of far reaching resolutions, as we hear in this report with Caroline Okie and Noma. The 64th Ordinary Session of the General Assembly of the Development Bank of Central African States, BDOSA, has wrapped up deliberations via video conferencing on a positive note with three fundamental points to take home. First of all, the analysis and approbation of the 2019 financial performance is on the rise. The second point dwells on the adoption and approbation of the intervention of the BDRC country strategic paper for the Republic of Congo. And the other important point was on the admission of two new shareholders in BDRC. Talking about two new shareholders, it is the brilliant financial performance of the bank for the last three years that has prompted the Arab Bank for Economic Development in Africa, Badea, and the African Solidarity Fund to become partners with the bank equity capital, thereby not only enhancing BDRC's credibility, but a major milestone in the bank's capital increase operation. Closing proceedings at the General Assembly, the new board chair who takes over Cameroon's Minister of Finance, Louis Paul Motuze, expressed gratitude to all the stakeholders in which also participated the CEMAC Commission chairperson Professor Daniel Ona Ondo, amongst others. The government of Cameroon has called on Cameroonians to be responsible and level-headed in the use of social media platforms and refrain from using them as weapons of image tarnishing, slandering, and the concoction of fake and deep fake news. Communication Minister Rene Emmanuel Sadi 
And his counterpart of Post and Telecommunication, Mined Libom Lilingeng, who made the appeal, were speaking at a joint press conference in Yaoundé last evening, during which they requested journalists to steer clear of the misuse and abuse of the social media. Ewane Epole now reports on the quintessence of yesterday's joint press event. The press conference, jointly granted by the Ministers of Communication René Emmanuel Sadi and Madame Libom Liliken of Post and Telecommunications, centered on the social media platforms that impacts negatively on the population and government in particular. This manipulative and distorting frenzy is even more accentuated in the media treatment of the security situation in the Northwest and Southwest regions. In this regard, some have deliberately chosen to misrepresent the facts, depending on the circumstances in which these occur, and for hidden purposes, alleged victims of the tyranny of the government and of our defense and security forces. In the same way, the numerous atrocities committed by the armed bands in these regions are concealed, while the Cameroonian army, which is legitimately engaged in a fight for the preservation of our territorial integrity and the security of goods and people, is constantly being conspired demonized and stigmatized. The Minister of Communication also reiterated government's commitment to continue supporting media professionals who have chosen to identify themselves as professional journalists. He added that true and good journalism must remain noble par excellence. Cameroonians of different age groups and backgrounds have confessed to share a feeling of togetherness as they easily exchange on social media without any hindrance. Facebook, WhatsApp, email, Instagram, and the list is long, have seemingly brought the world closer to some of them who either go there to find friends, get entertained, or simply do research. In Act 2 of our series on life around the social media, Emmanuel Vermeule sought to know from some Cameroonians what they look out for on the social, plat social media platforms. From different directions to a common meeting point, the social media. Cameroonians connected to Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter, Instagram and more find the world closer. When I'm connected on WhatsApp, I economize money and then communicate as fast as possible, I mean, to reach the largest number. He says his days are soothing with online audiobooks. The virtual library has never been this accessible. I find so many books online and WhatsApp groups to which I belong train me. If I go to social media, it's either for a research or to know something that I don't happen to know. Get to know what other people have published in relation to my work, a few or field of study in British literature. What if love is what drags others to such platforms? There are guys on social media finding love relationship, though I'm not interested. In just a click, they create content, paste, get entertained and educated and lots more as social media opens them to a free world. There is a new crop of lawyers that is cu currently integrating the core of the lawyers in Cameroon through the Bar Council. And to be able to get there, they went, underwent a training under the auspices of the Cameroon Bar Council so that they can be worthy of the appellations of lawyers in the country. And the procedure for one to become a lawyer in Cameroon is well spelled out in both the law and its practice. Our reporter, Mukwele Prince Willa Duma, accosted some practitioners in the capital city. From his report, it emerges that the Cameroon Bar Council remains the only legal channel open to postulants. Prince Will. 
The civil law is here. The common law is operational. Cameroon, founded on these two legal systems, follows an entry point procedure for postulants, the bar. Any candidate who has a degree in private law can uh, apply and sit for the bar exams. We call it the bar entrance. Before you get into that, you must first of all attach yourself to a law chambers where the law chambers will give you a letter of sponsorship. When you sit for the bar part one, then you become admitted into the bar as a people advocate. Uh, as a people advocate, you undergo training under your people master for two years. And at the end of the two years training, your master gives you a letter of uh, end of tutelage. When you are successful in the bar part two, then you become qualified to be admitted in the Cameroon bar. The law is not static. So are the categories of persons expressing the intention to become practitioners. Young people coming straight from the universities, former magistrates and lecturers. The training, the mentoring, and perhaps the patience is part of the grooming. The law says that we were supposed to be trained for just two years, but we were trained for more than. For nationals, like those with preliminary training outside the country, there is no ambiguity. If you go to a law school, you graduate and you are sworn in into the Nigerian bar, you can now apply to be sworn in directly into Cameroon bar. And the cost? Barry start law, the path is traceable. The peculiarity of the new batch of lawyers that is being sworn in across the country is that with the two is the, is the, that is the challenge to cope with the two judicial systems that obtain in Cameroon, that is, the common law and the civil law jurisdictions. The five-year training they underwent was tailored to groom them to face up to this bijural challenge. As Sidonie Jobmandi reports, the Cameroon Bar Council has been very instrumental in their formation process. Cameroon has a dual legal system. These are the common law and the civil law systems. The 872 new lawyers have to acquaint themselves with these two judicial systems so as to better handle procedures in courts and tribunals of the republic. Common law and the civil law all came as inheritance. You can express yourself in English or French. Even though both systems are operational in Cameroon, the question which needs a concrete answer is to know whether a judge in the common law jurisdiction has authority to judge matter concerning the civil law jurisdiction and vice versa. We defend both uh, uh, English and French speaking clients. A client should not come and you, because you are from common law or French law, you are not able to receive the client. You make the, the client to understand. If the client is coming uh, in, the, in, the, in the English system, you have to solve the problem of the client in English because where the, the client finds himself, maybe it's in Yaoundé, the other part of the, of the nation that are practicing the, the civil, and then you are a common law lawyer, you take your client and make the client to understand. Men of the legal profession who just took the oath in the court of law recently have to work in conformity with prescriptions of the Cameroon judicial systems. Lawyers are very crucial in the dispensation of justice in law courts and other jurisdictions in the country. Litigants generally make recourse to them to either defend or plead their cases in law courts, which therefore presupposes that their services are either hired and paid for by those who request them and as Ebenezer Akanga now reports on the role, he reports on the role of the lawyer in the, the legal uh, the legal setup of Cameroon and what it takes to hire one. The services of a lawyer can be hired by the government or an individual. There is a procedure to follow. When you have a problem, you go for the lawyer, you look for his chamber. Uh, if you don't know where his, his chamber is located. Uh, there is uh, this manual of law for lawyers. You take it and look through. You will certainly see the lawyer that you want. Because those who are advocates in training and the full-fledged lawyers, they are all there from the address, his telephone number, everything, post box, everything is there. The services of a lawyer are paid by the client. The amount is negotiated between the lawyer and the client. You can go to three lawyers 
they may not charge you the same. The basic principle is that the lawyer has to, to be paid. You open the file. The amount for opening a file depends on the lawyer, but the minimum is 50000 There's also consultation fee, if the lawyer so wants. The fees to be paid to the lawyer depends on the lawyer. It depends also on the subject matter. Some are so deep, some need a lot of work to be done, research and so on. It's a lot of writing, but others are just rapid procedures. So all of these elements are taken into consideration while taxing the honorarium. But a lawyer can also defend the poor and vulnerable, like widows and orphans, without pay. Thanks for watching the news on the Cameroon Radio Television, the CRTV. We are broadcasting live from Yaoundé. The operational capacity of the Boko Haram terrorist group that has been wreaking havoc in the far north of Cameroon has been reduced to its barest minimum. This is thanks to the close collaboration between the defense and security forces and local vigilante groups that have remained on the alert ever since the outbreak of the terrorist activities. As Ayuk John Ashu reports from CRTV Far North, the synergy between the defense forces and the population has enabled the resumption of commercial activities in border localities with Nigeria that were hitherto considered no-go areas. It has been, it is and remains perfect synergy between Cameroonian defense and security forces and local vigilante committees on the line of front against a common enemy, Boko Haram, perpetrator of untold human and material casualties in the far north region. This frank collaboration has enabled the nipping in the board of several incursions and attempted suicide bombing by the terrorists. To back up this other facet of the army nation symbiosis, the government has been assisting vigilante groups with logistics to enable them provide intelligence to the regular forces. Uh, the head said is uh, very satisfied with what has been done on the field alongside our forces of law and defense. They are asking to go further in order to overcome this war. The Banga Kuseri Road stretch, where the military engineering corps has been active in its reconstruction. We are working for that population and the, 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 the military serving in the engineering corps are Cameroonians. The professionalism, commitment and loyalty of our defense and security forces engaged in the war against Boko Haram continues to attract the esteem and collaboration of the civilian population in the far north region. The wearing of face masks in public places will be mandatory until further notice. The senior divisional officer of Indian has expressed the wish to see the works by the National Commission for the Reconstruction of the Northwest and Southwest Regions commence in this division as soon as possible. Lawrence Fowang was speaking in Mundembe while receiving a consignment of foodstuff and sanitary kits from the elite of the area as their own contribution in the ongoing fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Gerard Nanji is just back from Mundemba and is here with details. In the southwest region, under the patronage of the Prime Minister and Head of Government, Chief Dr. John Gute Joseph, are not indifferent to the campaign against the spread of COVID-19. If we don't feed our people, that love is meaningless. The consignment, comprised of foodstuff and sanitary kits, destined to the nine subdivisions, while officially receiving the package for onward distribution, the SDO rejoiced and said the gesture is timely. There has been no case of coronavirus in the division. The population has equally been sensitized on the need to keep respecting the barrier measures. 
Public health experts are advising people suffering from rheumatic infections to strictly respect the barrier measures as their pathology makes them prone to contracting COVID-19. What is true of rheumatism is also true of other pathologies as they make sufferers likely to, to, uh, to contract the virus. Let's now join Bolden Sama at the Public Health Emergency Operations Center for an update. Hello, Baldwin. What's new this evening? Good evening to you, Ben Mena Pufong, and welcome to the Public Health Emergency Operations Center, where public health experts during their traditional press briefing this evening laid a lot of emphasis on rheumatic diseases, as you rightly said, Ben Mena Pufong, citing the examples of uh, joint inflammation or gout, saying that uh, some of these diseases can easily affect parts of the body, such as uh, the joints, the bones, or the ligaments. And persons who suffer from some of these rheumatic diseases, they can easily get infected with COVID-19. And when such persons get infected with uh, COVID-19, their cases become quite disturbing. Most of them, their cases become quite worrying. And that is why Ben Mena Pufong, public health experts, have reminded them to continue respecting all these outline measures to limit the spread of COVID-19 so as for them to avoid being infected with this virus. This evening, equally, they have uh, appreciated the key role played by some health professionals in Cameroon, saving as many lives as possible, especially those who are taking care of COVID-19 patients the different isolation centers in Cameroon and equally in the different hospitals. They did not fail to mention the key role played by the media, equally in terms of sensitizing the population and talking about the media. They have been citing the example, the key role played by the Cameroon Radio Television, CRTV, in disseminating the right information to the public, telling them what they need to do in order to limit the spread of COVID-19. The take-home message from here is that together we are all agents to stop the spread of COVID-19. Back to you, Ben Menopufo. Thank you very much, Baldwin Sama, for those updates from the Public Health Emergency Operations Center here in Yaoundé. Over in the Northwest region, where the respect of COVID-19 preventive measures in that part of the, the chief town of the region uh, has greatly decreased despite the, state, uh, the, the, uh, the steady uh, rise in the number of uh, positive cases in the region and the government's persistence in, in reminding the citizenry to observe the COVID-19 barrier measures. Here is a picture of the situation in the chief town, Bermenda, with our reporter, Julius Niba. For example, the Commercial Avenue, a majority of persons can be seen wearing their mask wrongly, under their chin, or covering their mouth only. This situation is even worse in the case of markets and travel agencies like here at the entrance of the Bamenda main market where there is no respect of social distancing as people jostle for space. The scenario is sad in the case of drinking spots and food selling joints where persons are not only seated close to each other but they engage lively discussions. A city dweller returning from Douala says the situation in the northwest is better. To take more precautions in Bamenda than Douala. However, the respect of the coronavirus preventive measures is effective in banks, supermarkets, pharmacies and some private businesses owing to the fact that the institutions have made it obligatory. In other instances, some persons have been seen to put on their mask only in the presence of traffic police. The head of the military health at the Ministry of Defense has given the medical staff and officers of the second military region in Douala a big pat on the back for keeping up with the anti-COVID-19 barrier measures prescribed by the government. Colonel Dr. Emile Ferdinand Abeng Bozo gave the word of encouragement as he launched a training session for the staff of the second military region on the handling of COVID-19 cases. From Douala, Dix Nashu reports. The encounter at the second military garrison unfolds in military secrecy behind closed doors, but the context is known. The military, especially those of the second region, have to be in good health despite the coronavirus pandemic. So has it been since the outbreak, thanks to the strict respect of barrier measures, says Colonel Dr. Emil Fedina Abeng, who brought a message of encouragement from hierarchy. Our 
or nurse or doctor are fighting against COVID-19. They are doing their best and the results are good result. The encounter with the special medics of the hospital of the second military region was also to reinforce their expertise in handling COVID-19 related issues. They have to protect themselves and they have to protect all our soldiers. They have to take all the measures necessary so as to stop, so as to treat, so as to save, so as to be near the military and near our population. The role of the military has been reminded to be of utmost emergency, especially in keeping defense, and there should be no room for poor health. The Boya municipality is staging a strong affront against the calls for ghost town. The city mayor, David uh, Mafani Namange, has been coordinating a campaign to deter business people in the town from respecting the repeated calls for ghost towns. Only yesterday, the mayor proceeded with the sealing of stores which respected the calls for ghost towns while inviting the rest of the population to trust government efforts in securing their in securing them. Roger, Guy Roger Nana reports on the operation as was carried out in the presence of the deal for Boya. Business owners that continue to respect ghost towns in Boya will henceforth meet firm repression from municipal authorities who are bent on lashing out the phenomenon from the Southwest Regional Headquarters, Boya. Most of our traders, including drivers, have not been paying their business licenses under the pretext that things are hard and we have accompanied them through administrative tolerance. But if they impose on themselves again one day not to do business and turn and tell us that they cannot pay tax to the council. Expecting the same council to provide social amenities is not quite a wise decision. Tolerance period is over. So we have to open up our businesses and let Boya be vibrant. During this recent outing, the divisional officer for Boya took the opportunity to reassure the population of government's efforts to reinforce security in the city of Boya. We want everyone to come together with the forces so that we can ensure the security. The local authority are calling on the population to carry out their activities normally and trust in government efforts to maintain serenity in Boya. I was announcing a moment ago the President Paul Bia today at the Unity Palace held talks with the outgoing American ambassador to Cameroon, Peter Henry Ballerin, and the head of state and the U.S. diplomat exchanged views on bilateral cooperation between Yaoundé and Washington, D.C. The president of the republic uh, later handed over to the American diplomat a sculpture as a souvenir of his three-year diplomatic stay in Cameroon. For the past three months, the Americans have spent 12, three years rather, for the past three years, the Americans have spent a total of 12 billion CFA francs to support Cameroon's health system. And today's audience was a farewell audience to Peter Henry Ballerin, who will be quitting Cameroon in the hours ahead. On to some other story now. With the ugly turn the coronavirus has taken, many workers are considering transitioning to working from the relative safety of their homes with the help of platforms like Facebook, WhatsApp, uh, Zoom, and a couple of other ICT options. If the will to switch to remote work is not lacking, experts fear limitations in the technological equipment and internet network might be a new challenge. So how can Cameroon overcome such challenges to make working from home successful and beneficial during the COVID-19 outbreak, Beatrice Lossamba attempts an answer in this investigative report. In this second phase of the COVID-19 crisis, remote work is seen as a tailored response to workplace challenges attached to the outbreak. And as deemed necessary, cabinet and international meetings, workplace conferences are done virtually. The main problem here is that many, many managers doesn't know exactly uh, how to transform the uh, work to e-work. Yet working from home is simply not the option for most Cameroonians. Discouraged by limited technology and tools, slow or absent internet connection. 
A new challenge remote work poses, experts say, is productivity and communication takes a hit while employees are working from home. People become serious because they are in office. But some people have to learn that you can work from home as in your office with no difference. So I think it's just a matter of learning, make the research you need to, to, to find the right uh, software you need to do your job. In management, we have some software we can manage people working at home. Making this process seamless will require that. To give many, many attention in ICT training. After training, it's very important uh, to have uh, access of uh, access of internet. Our administrations uh, to to have to put a, as a disposal of worker uh, uh, computers to, for e-working. Experts say Cameroon is late in updating the skills of its workforce in remote work, and in this age of COVID-19, there seems to be no faster way to flatten the curve of the disease. And that does it for tonight. Thanks for the privilege of your company. Good night. Should we should avoid stigmatizing. In this connection, we should avoid stigmatizing. TV News, ici, toute l'info.